Hello, hello. So I have installed FreeNAS 11 on my old computer and I made a video about that old computer earlier and I put a link to that video in the video description. But when uh, FreeNAS is finished installing it will show you the IP address to the uh, server and you need to use your web browser to go to it and type in that IP address and for me it's this IP address it might be different for you and you are prompted to log in and when you install FreeNAS you are prompted to type in a uh, root password that you select yourself and that's what I'm going to type in here and we are in and I've been testing this a little bit so I don't get this special wizard window because the first time you log in here you get a small window it's a setup wizard but I just press exit on that and when I first logged in I noticed that the time was completely off so I went to general and I noticed it said on the time zone here it said US Los Angeles but I live in Sweden so I selected Europe and Stockholm and pressed save and uh, actually went back here and the, the time wasn't changed so I just rebooted FreeNAS now it's okay so the next thing you need to do is to create a volume and you go to storage and volumes and I go to disks here first and here you can see the disks that I have in the in the FreeNAS box and there are three 500 gig Seagate drives and then two one terabyte Western Digital Green drives and I'm going to create a RAID Z volume with this 500 gig drives I'm not going to do any RAID with the uh, green drives they're going to be single drives and I'm going to use iSCSI to uh, sort of connect to them so other computers can directly connect to those drives and they will show up as internal drives on the other computers but that's a completely different video so this video I will create a volume of these three drives and create a shared folder on, on it so first you need to do is create a volume and you go to volume manager here and volume name just because it's Seagate drives and here you can see available disks and you can see the two one terabyte drives and three 500 so I just click on the plus signs here and it will add all three of them so no more drives here and you can see all three and it recommends to do a RAID Z which means that one of the drives uh, will be for redundancy so I can lose one drive and just the data will be safe if you have more drives than this you can actually select a different one you can select RAID Z2 which means that two drives redundancy so two drives can fail at the same time and your data is still safe there's also RAID Z3 so you can have three drives as security so three drives can fail but I only have three drives here so one drive is for security and here you can also see capacity it will be about the terabyte storage so I just click add volume here and this might take a minute or two so we'll see how fast that will go
Let's have some elevator music. Well, okay, done. <laughs> so, now you can go to view volumes here. And here's the volume with a sort of data set on it already. And what I'm going to do here is to select this bottom one and go down here and go to change permissions. And I'm going to select also right. It's all checked. Just everything else will be as it is. And just click change. So that you can also write to this volume. All right, so that's done. Now you need to actually create a shared folder. So we go to uh, sharing and you can do for the Mac, share, webdev and iSCSI. That's another video. I'm going to have a Windows share. So I'm going to add Windows share here and path, click browse and go to Seagate. Just select it and name of the share, the shared folder, just share. I'm also going to select guest access. You can have uh, different users and uh, accounts and passwords and stuff, but I'm, I'm the only one in my apartment here, so I just, I don't need to log in. And I just press OK here. And normally, when the first time you do this, it will also ask if you want to uh, enable the SMB service or the Windows Share service. And uh, I don't get that question now. Yeah, but it activated automatically. <laughs> so it will uh, ask if you want to enable SMB and you press yes, and it will automatically activate it. And you got a bunch of other stuff here. You see, I discuss. See, I will do that in another video. But here you can actually see the shares. And if you had a lot of more shares, you can see them here. So let's see if this actually works. So I'll just minimize this. And let's see if I can actually select a video copy and let's go to other locations here are is the free nas yeah okay, i got it over here let's see if it works there it is and there's the share folder and anonymous yes i just connect and right now you can see that it's all mounted and I'm on the shared folder. So let's see if I can actually paste it here. Yes. So it's copying the, this file. And it's about 75 megs per second. So that's decent speed. These are old, uh, really old drives and Plus, it's a kind of a raid as well. So there it is. On 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 it. So that's kind of share, and you can also if I go to yeah the free NAS, you can actually just drag this, hold down the left menu, and just drag it here. And okay, because it's there. Okay, there it is. So, yeah, it looks different in Windows, but yeah, I run Linux here, so but that's it. So, uh, that's kind of how you create the volume and a new Windows share. It's 
that easy to do it. Then of course you need to log out when you're done. And also you can restart or shut down the computer over there. So yeah, that's it for now. So see you later.